Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a dermatologist tips for choosing a toothpaste with your skin in mind. Yes, you heard that correct. If you aren't familiar, certain ingredients in toothpaste can cause skin irritation and skin problems and may be responsible for skin issues that you're having, namely on your face, around the mouth, and on the lips. I know several of you out there suffer with this issue because you've asked me to talk about toothpaste and recommend some toothpaste that are low risk in terms of the ingredients. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the culprit ingredients, the types of rashes that are associated with those ingredients, and then towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you some recommendations for different toothpastes, and I'll also list them down below in the description box. Toothpaste is one of the most common personal care products that people encounter. Ingredients in, to in toothpaste fall into several different categories. They include abrasive ingredients, humectants, which are a type of moisturizing ingredient. They also have detergents and binding agents, as well as preservatives to keep the product safe from contamination. They contain coloring agents to give them a nice vibrant image, if you will, and make them desirable to use. They also have a variety of antiseptic ingredients that are helpful for cutting down on bad, the bacteria that cause bad breath, as well as those responsible for dental caries or cavities. And they also have fluoride salts, and then lastly is going to be flavorings. Now these are the ingredients that are in toothpaste, but you'll also find these ingredients in other personal care products for your oral hygiene, like your mouthwashes, dental floss, and even chewing gum. And then of course you can also find these same exact ingredients in your skincare products and other personal care products. So they aren't exclusive to your oral care. Ingredients in toothpaste can cause skin rashes on the lips and around the mouth. These types of rashes are referred to as contact dermatitis, meaning that for some people, when they come in contact with these ingredients, they will develop a rash, either because the ingredient is very irritating or because the ingredient is something that with time and with use, their immune system has decided it does not like and has developed a sensitivity to that ingredient and the individual has an allergy to it. It's called an allergic contact dermatitis. Of the ingredients that I just mentioned, most suspect in your toothpaste for causing contact dermatitis on the lips and around the mouth is going to be flavorings. Um, and the flavorings in toothpaste tend to be cinnamol, spearmint, carbone, peppermint, and something called anethole. These all underscore the taste of mint or cinnamon in your flavored toothpaste. So, if you have nailed down the fact that the ingredient in your toothpaste that's causing your skin rashes is flavor, uh, it's really hard actually to find flavor-free or uh, toothpaste that don't have any flavor. So a prudent choice is to switch to a toothpaste that is flavored with grape or strawberry, as these are not as irritating as the cinnamon and mint and they're not as likely to lead to sensitivity. And that's what you'll find in a lot of children's toothpaste. The second type of ingredient that people can become sensitized to and have issue with that is in several toothpastes, although it's less commonly present than flavorant, is going to be an ingredient called cocomethyl propyl betaine. Cocomethyl propyl betaine is a surfactant. It's in conditioners, it's in a lot of shampoos, soaps, etc. It's added kind of as a replacement for sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a detergent that can be very irritating. Cocomethyl propyl betaine has kind of replaced that in a lot of products, and people, uh, as a result, are becoming sensitized to it and allergic to it. But it's not always present in toothpaste, but just something to be aware of. The third ingredient that is responsible for many skin problems for people is something called propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is one of those ingredients 
that I have a love-hate relationship with. It can be so helpful for a variety of things. It's a penetration enhancer, meaning in skincare products, it helps active ingredients get into your skin better. It's also a humectant, meaning it holds on to water. But at the same time, it's a very, it can be a very irritating ingredient and people can become sensitized to it and subsequently allergic to it. Um, so uh, it functions in toothpaste as a solvent as well as a preservative, but it can be irritating in your toothpaste and be responsible for chelitis or lip dermatitis and irritation around the mouth. All right, the other ingredient that's gonna be very suspicious if it happens to be in your toothpaste, although it's present in fewer toothpaste these days, is going to be some type of essential oil. Essential oils are added as fragrance or flavorants, and they are aromatic compounds extracted from plants through a variety of different methodologies, distillation, CO2 extraction, uh, solvent extraction, even maceration. And the problem with essential oils is that they contain a lot of many different compounds and those compounds can be very irritating to people's skin, very sensitizing, and those compounds can also degrade and cause many problems as they degrade. The essential oil that seems to pop up more often in toothpaste, or at least the one I see more commonly, is going to be tea tree oil. So if you see tea tree oil in your toothpaste, definitely want to avoid that. It can certainly be responsible for problems with your skin. Uh, people always worry about parabens, a class of preservatives, and a lot of personal care products claim to be free of parabens because people are afraid of parabens. But as I said in other videos, parabens are actually one of the safer preservatives. They have a very, very low rate of uh, allergic contact dermatitis. 0.6% of patients with allergic contact dermatitis will be positive, will have a positive reaction to parabens. So it's actually very low, um, and but you know, it can happen. And they are sometimes present in toothpaste. Um, and then the last ingredient that I'll touch on is something called propolis. Um, propo propolis is in a lot of lip, lip products as well as toothpaste. And I went into detail about propolis in my video on the Egyptian magic cream, so check that out. But basically, it's something that bees make uh, kind of as a food source, and it's a mixture of beeswax, resin, vegetable balsam, as well as some aromatic oils, and then their pollens. And propolis is, can be very sensitizing, and many people have developed allergy to propolis that typically will present as a lip dermatitis. So it could be in your toothpaste, look out for it. All right, so those are all of the ingredients in toothpaste that most commonly or most likely are going to be uh, culprit ingredients for contact dermatitis. But there is another type of, of rash called perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis is a skin problem that kind of looks like acne. It's red bumps and sometimes pimply-like bumps, and it presents with a sensation of stinging and burning. I have a video talking about perioral dermatitis at length. This skin condition is most often associated with the use of topical steroids, prolonged uh, inappropriate use of topical steroids, um, and to a certain extent inhaled corticosteroids like your asthma medications. But we do have handfuls of case reports of perioral dermatitis in association with different toothpaste. Namely, highly fluoridated uh, toothpaste uh, have been associated with several case reports of perioral dermatitis. And in those case reports, the individuals were using toothpaste that had high levels of fluoride, they stopped the toothpaste, and their perioral dermatitis went away. It's not clear, though, to what a degree it is the fluoride in the toothpaste that may be contributory, and certainly not everyone who uses fluoridated toothpaste develops a problem with peri develops perioral dermatitis and not all cases of perioral dermatitis are due to that. The extent to which fluoride in toothpaste contributes to perioral dermatitis is poorly understood and not clear. These case reports of use of high, high, high percentage fluoride toothpaste 
uh, and perioral dermatitis, there were other ingredients for which we have not fully ruled in or out their contribution to the perioral dermatitis. I'm telling you that because while I'm not a dentist, I am familiar with the body of literature in support of inclusion of fluorides in toothpaste for dental health. Uh, but yes, there are, there are a handful of case reports out there of flares of this perioral dermatitis in association with uh, fluoride in the toothpaste. But the other type of toothpaste ingredient though that may be, may be more responsible is going to be found in your tartar control toothpaste. Uh, specifically uh, in tartar control toothpaste they have something called pyrophosphate compounds um, and these pyrophosphate compounds are added as part of the tartar control ingredient I believe but uh, because of the way this ingredient is, they have to increase the concentration of both flavoring ingredients as well as detergents within the toothpaste. So basically the, for the final formulation of the, of the tartar control toothpaste, because, because of the way they have to formulate it to get the pyrophosphate into it, it makes it more likely that the toothpaste is gonna be irritating. It has a higher percentage, a higher concentration of detergents, for example, which can be irritating. One such detergent is sodium lauryl sulfate. You'll see it in a fair amount of toothpaste. Um, and tartar control toothpaste may have a higher amount of that because of this pyrophosphate thing. Or it may be the pyrophosphate. Again, we really don't know, but those are culprit ingredients. So while case reports of perioral dermatitis in association with toothpaste, while, while they're out there, and this does occur, um, the ingredient that is contributory has yet to be determined whether or not it's an ingredient or just merely the frequency of brushing is hard to say, or the concentration of the ingredient, we really don't know. In other words, while I can recommend some toothpaste in a moment, I'm not going to be able to tell you if any one toothpaste over another is quote, perioral dermatitis safe. As with skincare though, it's really hard to avoid every single ingredient. And if you don't have a problem with your toothpaste, you know, chances are you're fine and you don't need to do anything different. Um, so long as you're brushing your teeth on a regular basis, make sure you're doing that. But um, if you are having a problem and you suspect toothpaste, I would say some lower risk toothpaste are going to be those that are lower, low in flavor. And again, as I said in the beginning, avoiding the cinnamon and mint flavored toothpaste is going to be the first step. And that can be really hard. The majority of toothpaste are flavored with mint or cinnamon. So here are some that aren't. Biotene PBF toothpaste, as well as Wearon uh, Homeodent natural toothpaste in the anise flavor. Anise is okay. I know it's it's odd. Like why is one thing okay and the other is not? But anise for people with for people who are sensitive to flavorants in their toothpaste, anise seems to be well tolerated. Um, and then Burt's Bees makes a um, anti-cavity toothpaste for kids that is an orange flavor, and that too seems to be well tolerated in people with with flavor who, whose dermatitis is due to flavorants. Nature's Gate also makes an anise toothpaste. And then Tom's of Maine anti-cavity toothpaste for kids. They make a, um, a strawberry flavor and then I think an orange mango flavor that uh, is also one to consider. Now the Tom's of Maine toothpaste and as, as well as I believe the Burt's Bees ones, those um, are fluoridated. Those do have fluoride in them, uh, but they also have sodium lauryl sulfate. So maybe flavorant's not your problem. Maybe it is the detergent aspect, the sodium lauryl sulfate, in which case the Tom's of Maine toothpaste are not gonna be a good choice for you. Um, but an alternative is the brand Hello. Hello Kids makes a fluoride containing toothpaste in a strawberry flavor that does not have sodium lauryl sulfate in it. Instead, it has cocamidal propyl betaine. So, if uh, sodium lauryl sulfate is your issue and maybe the flavorants are just all too irritating, then that would be a good choice. But if you are allergic to cocomethyl propyl betaine, then you're not going to want to use Hello Kids. You're going to maybe want to consider Tom's of Maine. So you kind of have to be a little bit of a detective in terms of reading ingredients. Hopefully this video is helpful to you guys in terms of laying out some of the most common culprits 
But uh, with the aid of your dermatologist, that would be the, no the way to know what ingredient is specifically that is causative, if any. Um, you, you know, they can do something called patch testing, which will look for potential allergies to these ingredients and help you go from there in terms of avoidance. Uh, but again, check the description box. Not only will I list the toothpaste that are low, lower risk, I will also list out these ingredients that I mentioned here so that you can be aware of them, their names, um, as potential culprits in the fight against perioral dermatitis and chelitis and contact dermatitis around the mouth. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.